evening and welcome. It is Friday, November 18, 2011. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes. Alex will be back next week. He's out on location covering an important story related to the United Nations takeover of parks and wildlife areas. And we have a large update tonight covering a lot of that material and we'll cover more in the future as well. But first, let's get into the news. In Europe, all things dealing with the debt crisis are coming undone. Kurt Nemo reports that there are ECB riots beginning in Italy as globalist Super Mario forces austerity. Now, this is an out-and-out -out Bilderberg and trilateral member, and he's instituted a new, quote, uh, technocratic government to impose austerity measures. On his first day in office, the bankster prime minister of Italy, Mario Monti, told Italians they could expect to be rolled by ECB banksters, European Central Bank. As we noted last week, Mario is a super globalist, a trilateralist, Bilderberger, and former bankster for Intesa San Paolo. His job is to bring IMF style austerity to the people of Italy that Berlusconi cleared the way for. Specifically, this will include new taxes and, quote, incentives for free traders looking to buy up Italy's public infrastructure for pennies on the dollar of the same transfer back to the private sector they always do, not just anyone in the private sector. And so blogger J. Brad Hicks has noted that the Deutsche Bank and German banks loaned huge sums of money to Greece and Italy knowing for a fact that at least half of the loan money was being stolen by wealthy personal friends and business partners of government officials, not caring, of course, because they knew the European Central Bank would enforce, quote, austerity, demanding that people who didn't benefit from the loans would be the ones to pay it back, and thus, uh, under the reign of Super Mario, Mario Monti, the Bilderberg insider, the IMF riot has morphed into the ECB riot, and people were in uh, Turin as well as Milan uh, protesting against rule by bankers and this technocratic government set up by unelected Mario Monti. Certainly, it is rule by bankers. Meanwhile, the debt crisis shows again that Angela Merkel is the boss, and this article from CNBC gets into how having spent billions of euros they didn't have, governments across Europe are now finding out the hard way that without money they have to accept things they would rather not be doing, namely taking orders from Angela Merkel in Berlin and Mario Draghi in Frankfurt. And it gets into how Ireland's Minister Kenny uh, will have to visit Berlin to get approval of his spending plans for 2012. And it gets into how Italy and Greece are now forcing through austerity measures uh, with orders from the same entities and how Cameron in the UK has been told not to allow a referendum vote as they're trying to discourage referendums all across Europe in attempt to jam through this new bailout vehicle that will take away sovereignty uniformly across Europe, especially from the failed countries, uh, imposing new restrictions and attempting to set up a new political union throughout Europe. Furthermore, the Telegraph gets into Germany's secret plan to derail a British referendum on the EU, going into further detail on the restrictions for David Cameron in the UK. Germany has drawn up secret plans to prevent a British referendum on the overhaul of the European Union amid concerns it could derail the Eurozone rescue package leaked documents obtained by the Telegraph disclosed. The leaked memo written by the German forest Foreign Office discloses radical plans for an intrusive new European body that will be able to take over the economies of beleaguered Eurozone nations. And it goes on to talk about the riots in Italy and how the six-page German foreign ministry paper sets out plans for the creation of a European monetary fund that will transfer sovereignty from member states. The fund will have the power to take ailing countries into receivership and run their economies. So not only will these ministers tacitly and passively seek approval for their budgets, there will be a direct European monetary fund mechanism over them dictating all kinds of things, including these austerity measures, and they seek the development of a political union throughout the EU. And uh, furthermore, they have outlined ways to limit treaty changes and speed up reforms, i.e. preventing votes amongst the people in these countries, hoping instead to rubber stamp a bailout mechanism they hope will have unlimited money. They called it previously an unlimited monetary bazooka. We'll see what happens there. 
and indeed. Meanwhile, Russian warships enter Syrian waters to prevent NATO attack. Paul Joseph Watson writes about how Moscow, in an aggressive move to stop another humanitarian intervention, has moved in its warships. Russian warships are due to arrive at Syrian territorial waters, indicating that the move represented a clear message to the West. Moscow would resist any foreign intervention in the country's civil unrest. And obviously things are heating up there. Syria and Iran, among others, on the globalist hit list to take out in the Middle East. They've already dealt with Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, Libya and other countries in that Central Asian, Middle Eastern and Northern African area. And we can just expect tensions to escalate. We hope it will not lead to any kind of World War III scenario, although the interests posed for Russia and China make that increasingly likely. Now, another story we have for you tonight was based on a tip we got on the radio today. Alex and myself heard from a caller talking about an article in Game Informer the world's number one video game magazine, and it promised to, to explore the volatile political climate with a groundbreaking and controversial look at homegrown terror. And it gets into an article about the new Rainbow Six Patriots game, uh, which is one of several games based on the Tom Clancy novels. And this article is called The Enemy Within. It says, you fought Nazi, Russian, North Korean, and Middle Eastern threats. Now in Rainbow Six Patriots, you're asked, can you turn the weapon on your fellow countrymen? Can you turn the weapon on your fellow countrymen? I want to read part of this blurb here because it's very informative. Americans are angry, and why shouldn't they be? Uh, goes through everything, dealing with debt, foreclosures, bailouts, the degrading infrastructure, the job market, and a whole lot more. It says, in response to the gradual erosion of our beloved nation, resentful citizens of all kinds and backgrounds are rising up in the form of new political movements like the Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street. But unlike the 60s, uh, they have proven largely ineffective at slowing or reversing the downward trajectory, and the media is not helping matters going on to blame uh, Internet and talk radio, among other things. Case in point, okay, it says history proves that if leaders don't move swiftly to address the grievances, the political rage can sometimes find a more violent channel of expression. Case in point, the meteoric rise of militias in the past few years, and who does it quote, but the Southern Poverty Law Center and extremely politically biased groups that have long sought to target, quote, white ring, white ring groups, as well as uh, patriot and militia groups, including this organization and many other groups from We Are Change on down, all peaceful groups trying to defend this country and uphold the Constitution. It says in 2009, the Southern Poverty Law Center reported a massive resurgence in anti-government paramilitary groups, which jumped from 43 militias in 07 to nearly 300 in 210. And this was noticed by Homeland Security, NSA, CIA, FBI, and others as a real threat to the stability of the nation. Then it goes on to how America's volatile political climate serves as the jumping off point for Rainbow Six Patriots, where the tactical shooter series eschews the exhausted Russian, Chinese, and Middle Eastern crises that were so common, now to replace them with the roles of elite tactical units with homegrown terrorists. And the civilians caught in the crossfire, do you have what it takes to pull the trigger on a fellow citizen? And so they've set the scenario for Homeland Security talking points where they're targeting returning veterans, which are mentioned in this lengthy six-page article, militia groups, radical political groups throughout the country, and more. In the game, they have a scenario where the true patriots uh, is a combine made up of various militia groups throughout the country, headed by a charismatic figure named Treadway, who hopes to restore civil liberties and the Constitution. And it says he could strike anywhere. He'd like to overthrow the government, but he's really smart, and he knows that a movement today won't uh, conclusively have lasting change tomorrow, uh, thus other types of movements there, which the game gets into. And uh, there's an added bonus. It says in previous games, allowing a civilian to die was game over. That means you lose the game, you have to start over. Now you're not exempt from tough situational decisions. 
Do you kill one civilian now and potentially spare hundreds of lives, or is the lone human life too critical to lose, even if it means thousands of others may meet an untimely death down the road? In Patriots, you make the call whether or not to kill American civilian citizens. And this is just disgusting. It matches perfectly the MIAC report that leaked in 09. Uh, the very similar Homeland Security report identifying third party political groups, constitutionalists, and a whole lot more as part of the growing domestic terrorism uh, situation that TSA and the rest of them are supposed to be on the lookout for, thus justifying checkpoints and everything else on the highways, at train stations, bus stations, now in shopping malls. Uh, they have people watching at hotels now, they say, and a whole lot more. And this is just disgusting indoctrination. There's a lot of youth who play these games who will later be joining the military and essentially brainwashed through, uh, I think the average video game takes at least 40 hours of playing to complete. So it's a lot more time you spend in these games than with a movie or a TV program. And, and through the first person shooter, you're repeating these actions over and over. So you really kind of get indoctrinated with it. Uh, just a dangerous precedent, and you can see where government propaganda is in these big, expensive games, which rake in uh, more money now than a lot of movies and TV programs as well. So an interesting tip we got, and it is certainly true. You can check that out again in Game Informer, and we're going to keep an eye on what possible effect that Rainbow Six Patriots could have. Now, we're going to be back from break in just a minute with exclusive coverage of the United Nations takeover. Uh, but first, let's play some video from uh, Rainbow Six Patriots. Very nice place you've got here. You really did cash in on everyone else getting foreclosed, didn't you? Today, you're going to make up for that. <laughs> Listen, you hold this down until Times Square, or your family gets a Take it, fire! If they kill him, everybody on this bridge could be below sky high. Engage NYPD immediately. Are you ordering friendly fire? No time to radio now. Take the shot. Shoot your boom. They're down. Proxy bombers on. Remote detonator. This is bad. There's more than 100 people still in the kill radius. We're out of time. I'm oh, sorry. Over here, now! What did you do? What I had to do. And really, in other ways, this game just goes along with the same indoctrination of series like 24 with Jack Bauer, where it's okay to torture people. You decide if it's worth it to kill civilians to stop a terrorist attack, especially when it's American citizens as part of a homegrown effort. Now, we're going to be back from break in just a minute with exclusive coverage and some of Alex's clips from America Destroyed by Design and other updates on the United Nations takeover of much of our parks and wildlife land and a whole lot more, as well as more news. But I first want to remind you about the Christmas specials. There's a Patriot offer for a $39.95 super discounted 44% off yearly subscription to PrisonPlanet.tv that now includes the nightly news, Alex's daily radio TV show, which is three hours long every day, all the special video reports we do, uh, the online books, the other videos we offer, and a whole lot more. You can also get that yearly special with 18 physical copies of Alex's film on DVD for $129.95, an incredible deal. And there's nothing like Christmas time when you're giving gifts during the holiday to have a physical, nicely packaged, uh, plastic wrap, something to give to that friend, family, or loved one uh, to let them know, oh, what is this? What is this you want me to check out? And a lot of times they will, along with the other junk you get around the holiday times. Uh, so something to keep in mind. We'll be back. Now we're going to cover other news here, and then we have another exclusive Alex Jones video coming up, so stay tuned. Steve Watson reports for PrisonPlanet.com today that the Supreme Court in Minnesota is blocking the government's plan to claim outright ownership over DNA. And collecting and storing every newborn's blood violates the Genetic Privacy Act. And he writes how the case has exposed the fact 
that there is an ongoing semi-covert movement by state and federal governments to claim ownership over every newborn baby's DNA for the purpose of genetic research without the consent of individual citizens. And of course, this is a global DNA database. They're trying to map the human genome. It has eugenics tie-ins, and it has tie-ins with the development of uh, bioweapons and the rest of it, including race-specific bioweapons. But uh, specifically, the Minnesota uh, Supreme Court has ruled that any parent of a newborn would have to be specifically informed and opt into the process rather than opting out as they had previously done. And since 2008, the State Department officials have begun seeking exemption for the so-called DNA warehouse from Minnesota's privacy law, the Genetic Privacy Act, something we need to cover more in depth later. We previously spoken to one of the main people involved with this, Twyla Brace. Perhaps we should get her back on. Sprint has launched a, uh, its participation in the soon-to-be-mandatory emergency alert messages. Earlier in October, you saw the takeover nationally of television and radio communications with the first-ever nationally coordinated emergency alert messages. Now they wish to branch out to mobile phones and the Internet, and telecommunications giant Sprint has announced the launch of its wireless emergency alerts program that will deliver messages from the federal government directly to millions of Americans as part of a system set to become mandatory on all new cell phones. You have to opt in on the currently existing cell phones, but the new ones will have a special chip that coordinates with these government uh, alert messages and probably, I would imagine, may have surveillance technology involved as well. And all the majors are lined up to participate in this, so good luck getting out of that one unless we say no nationally. Um, on the unconstitutional front, as well as the puppet president front, Obama uses the auto pen again to sign a bill into law. He's overseas, uh, I think, dealing with some of the Asian foreign policy this week, but he needed to suddenly sign a bill uh, allowing the government to continue on a budgetary matter. So they decided to use this mechanical device that copies his signature rather than having the president physically sign the bill. Article 1, Section 7 of the Constitution says if the president approves a bill, quote, he shall sign it. No provision is made for having a substitute signature affixed by a mechanical device or designated aid. Now, you've seen the kings and emperors of the past with their little uh, seal that they use to sign bills, but here in America, it's been a physical signature. So is it unconstitutional for Barack Obama to use the auto pen? Uh, they get into how, under President George W. Bush, the lawyers argued for the right to use the auto pen, but Bush himself never used it. Obama, however, previously used this uh, sort of like tacitly agreed upon power to sign extensions of the Patriot Act. Robo-signing the Patriot Act doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Sounds doubly unconstitutional, something we should certainly keep a watch on. Now, uh, as you know, Alex is on a working vacation, partly to check out many of the United Nations held national parks across the country, and he's been giving continuous updates through his iPhone on the Alex Jones channel and posted at Infowars.com. You just saw one of his ex exclusive videos a few minutes ago. Now we have another one on the dumping of nuclear waste. Uh, let's go to that now. Thanks. There's a government truck that says radioactive U.S. government plates, and then it's got these 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 ICBM pieces or nuclear reactors. Oh my God! Type BU. What in the world is this? I want to know what these are, man. I, people won't be able to tell me. I'm gonna put this up on the web. We're out here in the. I mean, look at this. It's got the radioactive sign. Oh, we're fine. I think it's got the radioactive signs. Maybe they got like zombies in those tanks. Like it's some kind of zombie movie. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube. We're out here investigating the UN biospheres. Hey, but according to everybody, radiation's good for you. The EPA's raised the level they say is safe. I mean, how weird is that? A truck that says radioactive has a radioactive flag on the back, a warning, that has a US government plate. What do you think those are, Richard? Uh, that's a good question. It could be uh, some nuclear waste materials. I think they haul nuclear waste around here to try to put it away. So it could be that, or like you said, it could be uh, 
Maybe the radon gas from some of the drilling. Yeah, but I said that before I was taping, before we'd read U.S. government plate, they wouldn't be involved hauling the radon gas, though. So, I know that, uh, I guess, in some areas, they do still have nuclear weapons manufacturing and uh, yeah. nuclear material I'm, for... I'm sure whatever it is, it's nutrition. This is our first video uploaded on the road. Stay tuned. And there you have it. Of course, more updates from Alex throughout the weekend. If you're watching this live on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube and also posted to Infowars.com. Uh, but there you have it. The United Nations is going to clamp down on human activity to protect biospheres, supposedly. But then uh, nuclear waste is dumped wherever they want. GE builds nuclear power plants on fault lines on the islands of Japan. And now we have the Fukushima disaster and a whole lot more to deal with. Well, that's all we're going to get into tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. But just remember, throughout the month of October, you can enjoy a 15-day free trial of PrisonPlanet.tv. That's if you're not already familiar with how great those services are. You can watch this program as well as Alex's radio TV show during the day, three hours long and more every day for free for 15 days. Or if you already know how great it is, you can begin to take advantage of the PrisonPlanet.tv Christmas special where you can get a yearly membership for an extremely discounted price, 44% off, only $39.95. And you get the nightly news, the radio show, all the special reports, and a whole lot more. Or if you want to get the InfoWar package, you can get that membership for a year, plus 18 physical DVDs packaged and wrapped ready to go as very nice gifts to help turn on your friends, family, and neighbors to these important issues as it becomes more critical than ever. Until then, stay tuned and help spread the word about this broadcast. Warn people while you still can that this country is absolutely being taken over. They're putting in a police state, and they're even taking over our national parks, as we've covered, if this is the first time you're hearing that information. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have more next week. Good night.